Hey, what's up, Garden and Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Starting off a whole new week, whole new vlog. The sun's out. It's just, just fantastic out here for a long time since I got home. Just rain and rain and rain. And it was supposed to rain a bunch this week, and then the forecast just opened up, and it was like, no, no. You have a whole week of sunshine and the high of, like, 89 every day. It's going to be fantastic. Such a shock to the system to go from nice, sunny Florida. I mean, mostly sunny. It rained the first few days I was there, which is fine. They needed it. But then to come home and just dark rain and cold. Like, I've had the heat on. It's really cold. It's very unusual. And that stuff makes me sleepy. I don't know about you guys, but I've just, like, every day to spend... I'm like, I just want to sleep. So, the sun is waking me up. And I'm in a good mood. I, am I allowed over here yet, guys? There's a cardinal's nest up here, so I've been, like avoiding this area. I hear you. Don't worry. The babies are pretty big, so they should be okay. I did finally pick up some Amazel basil. Finally. If you've been watching the vlogs for a while, you know I've been trying to find it for a while. I thought I got four plants, which is a lot of basil. Probably unnecessary. I didn't realize until I got home that two of them are actually peppers, not even the Amazel basil. Well, hello. Look at you stealing some camera time. You are quite pretty in front of that black gecko kalakasha. Not in focus, but you just have to take my word for it. It's pretty. So I don't need the peppers. I don't want them. I have a lot of peppers. I don't need more. I mean, I have them now, so I'll grow them because I love bell peppers. I'll eat them up. But I need to get a couple more of the amazel basils. I'm doing a planter where I need those. Need to grab some creeping rosemary if I can find it. I'm pretty sure one of my local nurseries has some. And then uh, some sticks. Or really PVC caps. I wanna, it's time to, I want to get my pothos totemed up and everything. This is all stuff that like I'm gathering for other videos. <laughs> Won't even be in this video. But people like to do the follow around. They like to go shopping with me. So I figured I would fill in why I'm going shopping. I don't really want to because it means I got to go put on pants. And I don't want to. There's no pants and leisure time. I mean, just shorts. Pumpkin, where you at? Where's my pumpkin? Hey, Charlie. Drinking more water. That's good. I'm not going to disturb you while you're drinking your water. Let me back up a little bit. We had a long night. Okay, you're actually laying in front of your water bowl, which is very odd. I've never seen this. Are you okay? You alright, pumpkin? So, uh, yeah. I don't want to spread her fraud or anything. Last night crawled into bed and Pumpkin came running up on me and hi honey good girl don't know what happened and she had these big cuts on her really clean cuts she didn't act like she was in any pain but she was walking across the bed and I was like oh my gosh what is on your neck and I picked her up and I was like I can see like your meat where'd you go so she got up for something she's cut Took her to the emergency vet because, like I said, I could, like, see through the cut. It was wide. Very clean. <laughs> You're wound up, Pumpkin. Girl, you got the zoomies? You got the zoom zooms, Pumpkin? Where'd you go? Why are you so hyper? Okay. So, took her to the emergency vet to go ahead and get that stitched up. And, like I said, she was acting totally fine, but it just was concerning to me. Didn't want to get infected or anything like that, so... We didn't go to bed till like 5 o'clock in the morning, did we, Pumpkin? And it's 9 o'clock now. Look at the dog hair. Toby's shedding. I just vacuumed. Just vacuumed. Okay, bye, Pumpkin. So much hair. This is where Toby comes, and he rolls around, and it's just, ugh, ugh. So, problem with carpet. Everything sticks to it, and it's dusty. Where'd you go? Okay, so I'm going to spend a little bit of quality time with Pumpkin, because she's acting funny. want to make sure she's okay. The stitches... The anesthetic and the sedative they gave her might be wearing off by now, so maybe it's starting to irritate her a little bit. So I'm going to keep an eye on her. She seems okay. I'm going to go ahead and run those errands. Yeah, just remembered I have to wait for this video to finish exporting. Video? Why did I say that's so weird? Leaving her alone. She needs to rest. Like, we can't play or anything. She needs to chill, so hopefully she's just relaxing. <laughs> I forgot, like, the whole point of what started all this. I need some creeping jennies to put over the front of these planters. I don't know if this video will be out or not by the time this vlog comes out. Maybe it will. 
I'm not sure because I want to plant caladiums in here, and I figured when I'm doing that would be a good time to do a caladium video, so it'd be a caladium video. So I don't know which will come. I don't. I have no idea. I'm so tired. I'm still waking up. I'm sorry. Been trying to not drink as much coffee, but I have a feeling that that's <laughs> going out the window today. Well, I'm gonna do the right thing. Exercise. Take my vitamins. Don't need the caffeine. Blah blah blah. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the moon's out. It shouldn't. It's not supposed to be there right now. Yeah, sometimes we just have sleepy days. We just gotta accept that. Oh, you changed your mind. And just, you know, gotta push through it. It's not the end of the world. Don't have to immediately fill up with caffeine. Even though, oh, coffee sounds so good. But I won't. I'll be good. Hi, what can we get that? Sometimes you just gotta indulge. So, one, haven't seen an FJ in such a long time. Two, the cutest teeny tiny little bitty old lady just came popping out of that thing. Not what I expected. Oh, you didn't take your seatbelt off. Told you guys, I'm tired. The springy thing in my seatbelt isn't really pulling the seatbelt up anymore. It's driving me crazy. That's an exaggeration. It's annoying. Oh, the fresh stocked on the Sunfinities. Wasn't crazy about these last year, but... Some of mine came back, which was surprising. So maybe I'm a little bit more into them now. Oh, and I don't know if you guys remembered, I had a rant not too long ago about this place never having flatbeds. And they just got in these new garden carts. Isn't that awesome? Made me really happy. Some Guardia down here. Well, that's a pretty stuff. Hey, that's a nice big Dracania. It's the Marginalis tricolor and it's nice and big and it's a solid growth it's not coming out the sides I like so this is basically what I need but way too big also it's the music in here so loud I cannot film in here I'm getting the plant did I get that name right I can't even remember this would work too but still too big this is 1750 why this one's only 498 still not the right size it's a, I'm not going to bore people with picking out PVC fittings. That's not necessary. Hey, just kidding. going to bore you real quick. So here's what I'm going for. But I need to cut that in half. And they only have one of those fittings. Right behind that is this, which isn't the right thing. So I don't know. Heck, does this thing even have a skew on it? Nope. Cool. How am I going to pay for that? What's well, on clearance. That's probably why it's the last one. Well, someone cut this in half for me. I don't feel like doing it myself. Yeah, more ficus loratas. Pretty. They underplanted them with some pothos. That's nice. These bromeliads on clearance for like two bucks a pop, and they're totally fine. The flowers are faded, but that's just they need more light. They're still good, healthy flowers. <laughs> Does anyone remember why I was here? Other than the PVC. Oh, creeping Jenny. Flag, stone. I think that's it. Because the other stuff's at Home Depot. Ooh. Oh, look at this trellis. It, you can't really tell from looking at it here, but in the picture, it hangs some pots on it. That's pretty cool. Neat idea. Okay, I grabbed the noisiest cart to ever exist, so this is gonna make things kind of difficult. These are, I don't, you can't tell, little pieces. I need to, you know, y'all don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm grabbing some flagstone. I need to level out a spot to put my grill. And I have a big piece, but it needs to be expanded. Maybe that would work. Got a couple pieces, just in case. Not the right color. Is that a problem? The rest of my flagstone's gray. You, nope, just decided I don't care. Yeah, I wanted to walk around and show you guys the plants, but it's really... Not anything different from the last few times I've been here and vlogged, so I don't know if that's necessary. I do think I need another one of these, though, for my foxtail. No, I'll stick with the one I have. I was going to put a lotus in it, but I think that I'll just use it for the foxtail palm. I've been thinking in my front yard, which needs, like, an entire makeover, probably going to do some white jellas. I don't know if I'm going to do the wine and roses. There's a series from Proven Winners. I don't know if they're called, like... Bloomtastic, something like that. I'd like to find those somewhere. That's just me kind of thinking out loud here. I'm not doing that till next year, probably. 
Okay, Home Depot. I have to be quick in here though because I have plants in the car and it's kind of toasty. Like, real toasty in the sun. Uh -huh. You know, I was thinking about it though and I don't really think I need a third amazel basil. Which might be for the best because I don't see any of them anyways. Look at that. La Bamba. Why aren't you focusing? Oh no, I hope it wasn't doing that while I was on Lowe's too. I couldn't see my screen. Guys, if that was a lot of focus, I'm very sorry. It's the La Bamba jalapeno. I already planted some jalapenos, so I don't need any more, but I love jalapenos. Okay, there's one. I just, these are so vigorous. I don't actually think I need a third. You know, you have to kind of envision the planter in your head and it would look better from the start. Why is my autofocus doing that? That's a problem. But if you just wait and let things grow, I don't need it. Okay, that's it for the Creeping Jennies. I only had two of them, so that'll do. So the tag says buried treasure red, but the flowers suggest otherwise. Those are red. That is not. Okay, this one has some red and pink on it. I already have some of these at home and I haven't noticed them to transition. Are there multiple plants in here? Yeah, I'm confused. Well, I'm home. <laughs> Remember like, I don't know, five, seven minutes ago in the video when I was all like, hey, no rain this week. Well, that, that was a lie. This one's afraid of storms. That's new. Didn't used to be. So... I mean, I'm gonna keep doing stuff. This is for a different video, though. But it's 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 not that exciting. I'm planting annuals around palm trees. I guess at least I'm not going to have to water, right? That's nice. Ugh. <laughs> so this is why I'm potting these up. That is so annoying. The littlest breeze and just woof, falls right over. Yeah, good boy. Good boy, scaredy cat. So you wanna go inside, Tuck? Yeah, let's go inside as I call him a scaredy cat. Pumpkin's in there, she's not afraid. There you go. Go hide. Tobes? No, where's the Tobe? Is there a Toby here? There you go. You guys go hide. I think it's starting. The radar said an hour. Okay, well, what can you do? I'll pick back up later. Oh, except I don't want all my soil to get wet. Nope, I'm doing this in the rain. Doing it now. Girl, what is your problem? She's been over here just throwing a fit. I still see you. What's going on? They've been around for a long time. We see each other every day. What's all the commotion about? This is all getting sorted out in this video. Don't worry. I mean, if it ever stops raining long enough, it will be. Their nest is up here. The babies are pretty big, though. Like, they may have fledged by now. I could see them through that window the other day. They're big. I have been doing nothing over here on this side of the garden to give them their privacy. I like the cardinals. I'm going to try to do that with all birds. I just don't want to disturb them. But she's acting disturbed. I didn't do anything. At least not that I recall. I feel like I would remember doing something. Who knows? I scooted the umbrella. The umbrella? Scooted the wheelbarrow under the umbrella to help keep the soil dry. Normally I would use the tarp for that, so that, that kind of worked out. So I can finally finish this. I Like right after I said, I'm gonna do this anyways, it started pouring and there's a little bit of hail, kind of hurt, so went inside, but here we are four hours later. It's been very difficult to film this week because <laughs> it just keeps getting dark. Uh, cause I've been, f that's cause I've been filming in the evening though, cause the bugs aren't as bad. Oh, you sleepy Toby. You so sleepy baby Toby. Okay, she's being relentless and coming up very, very close to me. I don't, like there's a part of me that's wondering maybe one of her babies fell out of the nest and she's trying to tell it something, I don't know. Oh, yep, there's a baby down there. Well, ugh, I'm gonna, you're supposed to leave him alone, so that's what I'm gonna do. Gonna read about it for a second too though. Put the dog inside. Toby doesn't need to be out. So baby bird's fine. It's the next day by the way. It just it got dark and started raining. 
I hadn't realized until I looked back at the footage, because I didn't feel like bending down far enough to see it, that was a fledgling, and you don't typically need to put fledglings back into their nest. Mama and Papa Bird were really keeping a close eye on it. Like, way more than I usually see with the birds, which is great. I came out this morning, I let Toby out, and um, did some stuff inside, then as soon as I opened the door to come out, Toby's in here, my dog, he's in there, and I just hear shrieking, bird shrieking. Anyone who has birds, you know the sound. I mean, hopefully you don't, but it's like a certain distress sound birds make. You, you just, I think instinctually anybody would recognize the sound as, uh-oh, something's wrong. And while Toby is just, he's a sweetheart, he has dog instincts. And he's great with other dogs and cats and my pets, but he has picked up squirrels and bunnies before and they squeak and he's just instinctive. Anyways, I was worried he was hurting the baby bird, so I put him inside and then came out and started rummaging around in here and I found the poor little thing. He hadn't hurt it, so I'm really proud of him because, I mean, he was standing in here. That's why all the ferns and the gingers are messed up, but it was sitting right in here and the poor little baby had its wing stuck in that branch and that can kill them. I've found dead hummingbirds before. They get their wings stuck usually in the windmill palms which are down here. Those like the spaces in between the fans. They've gotten their wings stuck in there before. It's only happened twice but that's still concerning. It doesn't happen often though. So I went ahead and lifted this little wing. It hopped off into the ferns. I was just I was very proud of Toby for not doing what dogs would typically do and kill it. So, Toby's a good boy. Gosh dang it. Oh, you poor thing. I... Oh, is it too late for you? No, you're still moving. I always feel bad. I can't watch a worm flop around on the ground and not save it. It just seems so mean to just ignore that, but then they're gross and who doesn't... I mean, I don't like touching them, but I can't just watch it die. So, here you go, worm friend. Moisturize, get into the soil. Be free make my garden nice and rich. My garden. My soil. Um, look at what the wind, by the way, has done to my bird of paradise. It has just destroyed it. That's never been an issue before. The whole thing's like all growing this way. Not great, but it'll recover. It's been so stormy and windy out here. And then here are those majesty palms. I finished potting them up. There'll be a whole video on that. They look like garbage right now. I decided with that video that I'm going to, uh, wait a couple weeks for the final reveal be like hey here it is now now let's give it a couple weeks because plants they need to grow so i have a bit of a problem do you guys remember this from the i went to lowe's in two different vlogs and each time i was like man i love this vine well i went ahead and got it it's the lacy hearts chinese hydrangea vine it says shade but it's getting a decent amount of sun here and it seems pretty happy with it but um, I'm going to be moving it over to the shade. I have a whole area I need to redo over here past the hot tub where I'm going to be kind of um, sprucing the area up. Not trying to make it look like really nice or anything. But um, what am I trying to say? I got to level it out. It's a, it's a whole big thing. It's not important. It's going to be boring. I don't think I'll vlog it. And then I've been debating whether or not I want to clean up right here right now because I do still have some repotting I need to do. But I have other projects that are bigger that I need to do. I don't know. I feel like doing the, uh, I need, it's the foxtail palm. I'm going to put it in that pot, maybe, and do that. I also, the reason, I don't know if I explained when I was at Lowe's and I was getting that big PVC pipe, it's because I want to do a new totem for my pothos, like a really big one. And that's why when I was at Lowe's, I was like, I feel like I'm supposed to get another one of these pots, but I don't remember why, and I didn't get one. I got this, put my foxtail palm in. And I think that the pothos would look really great in this also. So I should have done that, but that's not a project I need to do right now anyways. Because I wanted to do that with several of my pothos. I want to do that with just my golden pothos, my uh, queen, let me, I guess I should show you which ones I'm talking about, right? The golden, which y'all probably, I'm sure, know what that looks like. Marble queen, manjula, these are hiding from the sun back here. Then there's the um, jade one right here, Cebu Blue. I keep wanting to call it Jade. The Cebu Blue Pothos, and then my Neon Pothos. That's a lot of, that's a lot. That's five of them. I don't think I'm going to do all of them up a totem. I thought about mixing them together, but the Golden Pothos is just so incredibly vigorous 
I feel like that would be a bad idea. It's gonna choke out the other ones, so I probably won't do that. But I also don't have space in the winter time for five in these big pots on those big totems, so I'm gonna have to decide which ones. You guys let me know. I'm going to do the golden, for sure, the golden pothos that needs to be repotted anyways. So if I were to pick just like one other one to do on a big totem, which one do you think I should do? The Manjula, which is very similar to the Marble Queen, but they have larger cupped leaves. Their variations more um, chunky instead of spread about. This is the Marble Queen right here. Slower grower for sure. Then there's the Cebu Blue, which their leaves are supposed to like undergo a drastic transformation when they start to climb, so that one might be cool. Then there's just the regular neon up here, just the neon pothos, just pretty green foliage. I don't know if I would do that one, but let me know. What do you think? Okay, and lastly, or I really should have started out with this, I have a bit of a problem with this vlog. I pulled my SD card out to do a little bit of editing last night, and uh-oh, corrupted. It happens sometimes. It's never happened to me, so I always keep extra SD cards around. But once it happens, what's done is done, so I can't recover any of that footage. <clears throat> so I have stuff from the beginning of the vlog, which I've talked about, like, lows and everything. You noisy up there. I have the stuff from the beginning of the vlog and then everything that's just been going on the last like five or six minutes here. Everything else is gone, like 30, 40 minutes of footage. So I don't really know what to do about that. I can just like walk around and talk about my plants a little bit. These are all things that are going to go into the native garden, which is really like my dump garden. It's where I just throw things that don't require a lot of maintenance. They're things I want to grow, but they don't really go anywhere else, and it gets a lot of sun, so it's just kind of, I call it my dump garden. It's where I, I just I just told you. And I try and keep it focused on the pollinators, the <laughs> bees, which you can see. Bees over here, and hummingbirds, butterflies, and whatnot. I have some Asclepius, which I need to get out of the car. I left it in the car last night because it was raining and just remembered that that's still in there. So that could be a problem because <laughs> it's like 90 degrees today. It was very sunny this morning. So hopefully that's okay. Uh, I do the Asclepius for the monarchs. It's really important. I like to make sure I have some perennial Asclepius and that's the butterfly, the milkweed. And I like to plant the perennial as well. And then everything else in here is just color. Lots of colorful things. The Pretoria canna, that's this plant right here. I'll probably do that in an aquatic planter, I'm not certain. And there's a bunch of Clarence plants over here too that I haven't shown anyone because I didn't vlog that time when I was at the store. But I got this Mandevilla back here. It's just the Alice Dupont with the pink flowers. This was only $3, fantastic. And then another lantana tree. I did a whole video potting one of these up, but this one's different. It's the Moselle, Moselle. Well, I don't, I don't know how to say that. But see the original price, and then the garden part manager knocked it down to eight bucks for me, which I'm very appreciative for, because these they bounce back very, very well when they've been stressed out, and it'll be fine. I had to restake it, but it's gonna do great. The flowers are different from the confetti, not drastically different. The confetti which I'll show in just a second, starts out yellow, goes to pink. This one, I believe, kind of does the same thing. <laughs> so, not entirely sure what the difference is, but we'll see when this starts to flower. Also, it smells amazing out here right now because the magnolia opened up a flower this morning and it is so fragrant. That lovely, lemony, citrusy, very clean smell you get from the magnolias, it's one of the reasons I love them. The uh, Magnolia Grandiflores. This is a Bracken's Brown Beauty. Stay smaller. More cold hardy than like just the regular Southern Magnolia, the Grandiflora, which this is a Grandiflora. It's just a sport of Grandiflora. But they stay smaller. And I usually keep this potted up and do like something nice with it. It looks nice during the winter time in a pot. Eventually I'm going to need to stop doing that. It's going to need to go into the ground eventually. Within a few years probably. It'd be a little bit more full. You know, Magnolia's I mentioned this in my Florida vlog, they're really just not as pretty when you get this far north, unless you do a really good job at protecting them and siding them, and I don't really have a spot quite big enough to fully protect this one the way it needs to be. Oh, hello cloud! Finally! A little bit of cloud cover, it's very sunny. I've been reapplying my sunscreen like crazy today. Just look at how big Tropicana is getting. This is probably the biggest it's ever gotten, which is great. 
I just dump some mulch on it every spring. It's up against, or every spring, every fall. It's up against the house, so it's in a warmer spot. Comes back every year. There's actually two, but the other one doesn't get as much light. It's back there. It's just, it's looking great. I can't wait for that to get just a little bit bigger and start to fill out more. That Kalakaja didn't plant that there. They just spread like crazy all over the place. Okay, here's the dump garden. I've never shown it before. It's not something I brag about. It's a place where I don't do anything for maintenance. I just throw the plants in here. There's drip on them. I do, well, I guess I do a little bit for maintenance. I make sure to amend the soil and mulch it and whatnot, but there's like wild strawberries and stuff. I just let them go because the rabbits and things really seem to enjoy them. And so does Colby. Colby enjoys munching on the strawberries too. There's a bird nearby that seems to be very unhappy. That Oh, where is it? Where are you? See it? Mama Cardinal, let me know. That's It's okay. It's okay. It's just a tortoise. Just a tortoise. You're fine. He's not gonna hurt you. Birds do not like my birds. Go crazy when Colby comes in the room. So there's a hibiscus, a hydrangea. There's a trumpet vine that I've just kind of let naturalize and do its thing. Daisies, and there's things that are still coming up. <laughs> the Asclepius is struggling to come up. The soil here is extremely compact. It's mostly gravel. This is all drainage, actually, for all the houses that are above mine. So uh, that's one of the reasons it's just not the most ideal place for planting, but it makes for a nice little section. It's kind of hidden where I can just toss things in and <laughs> keep things looking nice. You really... Cardinal's not happy about the tortoise. So that's what all those plants I just showed. I'm going to start to fill in gaps, make this look much nicer, but I'm still probably not going to pull up the strawberries or anything like that. I do just want to kind of be a spot where nature can do its thing. I have some castor beans I'm going to put back there just because they'll grow up a little bit higher and offer a little bit of privacy from over there. And um, yeah, so that's, I never show it because, I mean, why would I? It's just a spot where I don't really do anything. But I think it's going to start to perk up and look pretty nice this year. I used to plant my gourds up here, pumpkins, squash, things like that, because it gave them a long space to run. But the pines got so big that they just don't really grow well over here anymore. And the dogs would run through them and just, they always destroyed them. I even tried putting up a little miniature fence right here. Didn't really help. They just jumped right over it and destroyed everything. So no more of that. You having fun, Kolbs? Having fun over there, bud? Yeah, never mind all the tortoise food I just threw out for you. I wish he would kind of step up his game when it comes to chewing on the weeds. He's not big on it. Colby's a very picky eater for a sulcata tortoise. I have been pulling some of my orchids over into this area where they're getting hit by my drip just because they needed some extra hydration. They got kind of wilty when I was gone because I guess it got really hot in the garage. I still had plants that haven't moved out, which I think I've mentioned either in this video or in another video. Since it's been raining so much, it's mostly my succulents, but the amount of rain we've had, I just didn't want to bring them out because a lot of them would just rot. Then I was gone for two weeks and they dried out. I mean, I soaked them before I left and turned uh, the heaters haven't been on in forever, so I didn't have to turn those off, but I turned the circulation fans down and everything. But I guess it just was pretty toasty. But they're okay, they'll bounce back. They Orchids rehydrate, depending on the orchid, of course, but the kind of orchids I grow rehydrate pretty easily. I don't get into anything too complicated. I have um, a lot of other things that take up time, so that's why I don't like to get into orchids that require way too much maintenance or really fussy. No, I, don't, I don't have time. It's a spider web right where I need to be walking. Okay, and then here is the confetti lantana, which I probably should have bounced over to that when I was talking about the other one. It is growing very well. Look at it. So nice. I don't want to go too far into the plants. I mean, I do because I love talking about my plants, but uh, I mean, there's going to be another garden tour in like a week and a half, so that, that would kind of ruin things, right? Anyways, this is where the barbecue grill's going over here. I need to re-level everything. I need to move out all this overflowing pottery and whatnot. I have a couple more flagstones just to kind of expand on the area with some sand and paver base and whatnot. That's why the grill's sitting on the patio, because this whole area needs to be kind of redone. And um, I have a bunch of plants that I want to put in here to make more of a shade garden. Just not really ready to do that yet. I need to work on the sprinklers and some soil amending and whatnot, because this is like a massive pile of mulch that I put down a few years ago, and I've been adding like um, compost starter and espoma products, like espoma biotone. Anytime I have leftover fertilizer at the end of the year, 
then I dump that out here in the springtime because I generally once it sits over winter I don't want to use it and that's been helping to break that mulch down into soil but I need to keep amending it before I start planting it in. You, you know what I'm saying? But I think I'm about there. It's been about three years so it sh there should be like actual soil underneath this mulch now that I'm starting to see the mulch is broken down on top and it needs a top dressing. It's a pretty good sign that I can get in there. I'm gonna work some sand and things and whatnot into that, but probably gonna do like some hostas, a still bay, um, maybe some pulmonaria, ferns, stuff like that. My poor tree fern, this is storm damage. Uh, we had some bad storms a few weeks ago that just broke it and shredded it up, poor thing, but it's already popped open a new frond there, has another one opening up right there, so it's gonna be fine, it just, kind of stinks because it looked I mean it looked better when it wasn't didn't have dead foliage in it I guess I can cut that out can't I I was waiting for it to harden off because I didn't want to accidentally like snap a frond but I don't think that's going to be an issue anymore and this whole area over here is where what used to be like my bird garden I have tons of bird feeders that I would spread around in here and into the trees and then there's this really big window here the cat trees over there and the cats would lay in it and they'd watch the nature channel, but I stop feeding when the grackles show up. That's because, you know, I don't want to encourage them to be around because they poop everywhere. They left. They always leave between the 15th and 21st of June. So finally, the patio's not covered in bird poop. The water's not full of bird poop. The songbirds can start to nest a little bit more peacefully because the grackles go through and they raid the, uh, the songbird nests, pull their babies out and kill them and everything. They're just, they're mean birds. I love them because they're animals and it's just nature. They're just doing what they're programmed to do. But the poop and disrupting me and my harmonious bird sanctuary, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, I guess it could be a sanctuary for them too. I don't like them. And I don't have to. Um, these guys need to be potted up. They're going to go around one of my magnolias, but it's going to be a little while until I can do that too. Projects are just backed up like crazy because of not being able to do anything for pretty much the entire month of June. It's crazy to me that it's almost July and <laughs> I'm still planting not normally how it goes but what's the rush really right I'm, I'm trying to take things at a leisure pace and really enjoy things when I think about the projects on top of projects on top of projects it can be kind of anxiety provoking and that's not that defeats the purpose gardening is supposed to be therapeutic so it's just get done what I can when I want to when I feel like it and but uh these can't stay in these plastic bags I cut holes in the bottom of the plastic bags which will all be in the video about receiving these so they can drain, but that's still not enough for them to breathe. So I need to rummage through my pots and find some more things to throw them in. And I get that, I'll do that. That's something I can, you know what's fun about transplanting needle palms? Nothing. Oh, they're so spiky. They really live up to their name with the needles. And this is why I always hold on to old pots. At least just a few. I know that this isn't like an upgrade but it's not supposed to be these are gonna be going in the ground here within like a week or so i just need to get them out of those bags i need to lower that down and get some soil on top of those roots too and these are from a grower called mail order natives so they'll get their own video when the time's right when i get around to planting them i filmed the unboxing kind of they showed up at nighttime and it was about to storm so i just like got some little clips of me cutting the box open and showing what their stuff looks like but um i don't know if you've ever ordered from them I like them a lot. They have natives, as the name suggests. The communication's really great. Um, this time of year, like they have a disclaimer up on their website saying that they're not shipping because of the heat, with some exceptions, like the palms. So I emailed them and I was like, hey, you guys go ahead and send them. I'm not worried about needle palms with the heat, especially this is, you know, from like a week or so ago. It was nowhere near as hot outside. And even still, shipping them when temperatures are in the 80s not a big deal because they're tough really tough tough palms i think i need to lower this one down some more that's much better like i said they're not staying in these pots this is just temporary and i did put a little bit of a spoma biotone starter in i talk about that all the time the it's good for not just getting plants started and established but it kind of seems to help with the stress a little bit which is um, really true for their liquid, which I'm completely out of, but when these go on the ground, I'll be using the liquid on them. Yeah, good thing, like I said, good thing I held on to some of my old pots. It's not hoarding if you use it. That should tide these guys over for the next, mm, probably week and a half. Add this to my recycling pile. I can finally put the tarp away, finally. 
the tarp has come in really nifty for keeping things cleaner. I mean, dirt still gets around, sorry, soil. But it's made a big difference. But I don't, it's an ugly thing to have out on the patio, but it's better than having potting soil all over the place. I worked on this and yeah, I'm gonna have to get more base. It turned out that the ground had been raised up from the tree roots, so I ended up raising things up instead of bringing them down. And then I thought I had it level. I used my level, but I, I was kind of rushing through it, to be honest. So I need to get more paver base to raise that end up. Otherwise, that's, well, it's not done, <laughs> but it's, I got it over here and I got the stone almost leveled. It's a big stone, so I think I need a helper. Have I shown you guys my scovola? Look at this, isn't it fantastic? It's the white, purple, and pink all in one pot here. And it just, it's so beautiful, isn't it? It's a little bit rough because things got kind of hot the other day and I wasn't home to water them and the drip was off because it was mowing day, but I moved them over here where they're not getting quite as much sun. They bounce right back within probably, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes of being watered, but they're still like a little bit rough. I like for the foliage to be a darker green than this, but they're just nice. They're such tough plants. I really, really like scovola. Oh, that birch tree. Why are you so messy? I used to love birch trees. Used to have birch trees. They were great. We got rid of them because they were just always dropping leaves if there was any type of storm or anything like that. If they weren't constantly wet. My neighbors still have their birch trees though. They're always falling down. Falling down. Dropping leaves. There we go. Had company over. They like the pizza slice. I don't really like the pizza slice so that's where that gets to stay. We're not actually in the pool. I mean I think it's cute but I don't like really want a pizza slice floating around out here all the time. I used to have the swans and those were fun. I actually still have them, but okay, that's not clogged up. But um, I don't know, I just haven't filled them up. Things that float drift in front of the skimmers and they make things kind of messy. Oh, that water felt so warm. It got cold again. It's been really pretty. Also, yes, it is raining. Just finished storming. That's why there's leaves everywhere again. That forecast Oh man, at the beginning of this video, I was like, oh, it's going to be a beautiful week. Lies. I mean, it was better than it has been, so I'm not really complaining. Had some nice days. I mean, it's only been a few days. I, I've actually, since last weekend's vlog, which was my trip to Florida, I've only really been home for a few days. So it's still been kind of nice. There's another flower opening up on the magnolia. That's exciting. These poor plants. I watered them and watered them. The sun was just so strong. I guess it wasn't stormy enough today. Look at this Clepius. Like, this isn't even in full sun. I don't understand that. I guess they were kind of in a shady area at the nursery, so maybe they just weren't ready for sun. They'll be okay. They're tough plants, but that's not, you know, what you want to see when you pick up new plants is you bring them home and then have the sun just cook them. There go. Give those some water. Get the shrimp plant. Being all cute and shrimp planty. This isn't really a shrimp plant, but it looks like a justicia. It's actually Pacastachys. Looking nice though, and got a nice flower opening up on that hibiscus. And this, I think this one's mandarin orange. It's wilty now, but oh, this morning, absolutely, it's just beautiful. Oh, never mind. it just says tropical hibiscus. I thought the variety was mandarin, I thought this is one of those trade one hibiscus. I think it is, maybe I'm just not seeing the tag. There's another tag in here. Orange Sunset Wind. That's the name of that one. <laughs> not, that, not that anybody was looking at that and going, oh, so pretty, but believe me, it really was. You can see it across the patio. It has like hints of pink in it. It's just already aged out. It was very, very, very bright and sunny up until the storms rolled in. Until the storms rolled in and cooked them is what happened. And this one popped open a flower, which I was really happy about this morning. I was looking at it while I was sipping my coffee and I went, oh, a flower. And then I looked away and looked back like 30 seconds later, the flower was on the ground. Why? What happened? Storm blew over my scavola. I was just showing you guys. Poor thing. Looks okay though. Actually, I think it looks better. It's got a lot of water since you guys saw it. Oh. This, which you see has a strappy thing on it, just fell off from in here. And I've always wondered what these little holes were for. This entire, I've had this stand for years. 
this goes in here. I'm assuming, right? I mean, that's what it looks like, and that would explain why sometimes it's very unstable, and I've always been a little bit confused by that. I'm like, why are the legs so wobbly? Why didn't they make this stronger it's this, this entire time? You guys, the entire time. I had no idea that this was tied up under there to stabilize it. Well, good to know. Three years later, figured that one out. I could probably set a pot there, too, wouldn't you think? I don't really think I need to, but I could. The Andromeda Heliconia. All these others in here are the Lady Die, but this one is the only one I could find, and it's my preference over the Lady Die. I like them both, but I like these more. It's the only one I was able to find, and it's really getting happy here. This is, they have like false leaves. These flowers are mostly false leaves. The actual flower flowers are down inside of the bracts, and there, that's the actual flower. So they're modified leaves, but this would normally be green. <laughs> Autofocus. That would normally be green. Anyways, it has new flowers coming up on it, and that's pretty exciting. I want that to get really nice and full. I'm going to start doing things with these and plopping these around next week. Has to wait, though. Kind of time to get back to reality. Got to get some other things done that aren't gardening things. It sucks that I lost that, like, 30 minutes of footage. It was I was at another nursery picking up a lot of the plants that I showed you before, the things I was like for the dump garden and those rosemaries and the Asclepius and things like that, but it is what it is. Things happen. Could be worse. Camera still works, so that's good. But there's still a lot of lost stuff, and I don't like to like make up things for the vlog. Like It needs to be things I would be doing anyways. I, I, I don't know. That's just me. So I'm going to wrap things up because there's not really a lot of vloggy things left to do this week that I, I really don't think I'll have time to vlog anyways. I mean, things that I would have time to vlog. Anything of interest. Not that that's, I've heard from a lot of people, they don't really care if things are interesting, which is flattering. Thank you. And don't be hitting up my 40 minute video saying we like longer videos. 40 minutes is a long video. Come on. Flattering. And I do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it. I did notice the deer ate my hydrangeas out front. So not thrilled about that. I've never had to deal with a deer before. That's a newer thing. I'm not thrilled about it. This is earlier in the video when I said, oh, the Sunfinities and one of mine came back. I don't know if this is a Sunfinity. In my fall planters that I did last fall, I did two planters that had sunflowers in them. One was just like, a, oh, the tag's still here. Oh, okay. It's not the Sunfinity. So I was wrong about that. It just says sunflower. But it did come back. I mean, it receded and managed to survive the squirrels, which is, you know, always the thing is to survive the squirrels and rabbits. So I don't plant sunflowers that often. I love sunflowers, but they always get eaten up before they can really do anything. Like, there are ways around that. You can protect them. I just haven't been doing that. It's I think it's the humidity that keeps kind of fogging things up. There's like, it's hard to see. Like, here, there's like a steam rising from everything. So it was really hot and then it rained and temperatures dropped about 25 degrees. So that's why I, that, it doesn't matter. But yeah, the point there was in the beginning when I said my sunfinity came back, that it was just a sunflower. It doesn't really matter. You guys know I'm actually kind of, sort of, thinking about working on my fall planters already. Which I know seems ridiculous, but last fall I had trouble finding things to use in the fall planters. Pretty much everything was sold out by the time it was time to do them, because the nursery starts selling the fall plants where I live in, like, July. That's when they start to clear out the tropicals and everything and bring in the fall stuff. And I waited till September, like, you know, a moron, and there wasn't a lot to choose from, so I'm already... <laughs> kind of thinking about working on those and just waiting until fall to release them. I don't know how I feel about that, though, because what's the point of doing something that if people have the same problem where they live and be like, hey, look at this, and then you can't do that if your plant, you can't find the plants. I'll do, like, a combination of things. Let's get those hydrangeas real quick. Yeah, I was out here... I was out here <laughs> taking out the trash and bringing the mail, and I was like, did someone come through and prune my hydrangeas? What happened here? Because, like, how come some of them have little flowers on them and what happened oh dear right i mean they're are they that tall this is tall is that deer i don't know what else it would be like unless someone actually did come through and top off my hydrangeas which i don't know why anybody would do that so i don't deer right that is it is tall though deer tall they are pretty big so I, maybe that I, that's probably what happened right not thrilled about it. Begonias are doing their things. The alacajas finally 
destabilizing. How did a little garden tour just start? That wasn't intentional. I said I was going to wrap things up. So, that's what I got to do. Oh, the Thai Giant put out another leaf, too. They're getting bigger and bigger. See how... Do you guys see that? See how easily... That's all it takes. When I'm around plants, no focus. None. I'm just plants. Yeah, I need to clean the pool out, do some maintenance type things, having company over. You know, the 4th of July weekend's coming up, and there'll be things going on this weekend, and then the next weekend, because 4th of July is on a Thursday. So I hope everybody has a good 4th, by the way, since this will be out before then. Everybody who celebrates that, have a good time. Be safe. Oh, and pumpkins, fine. By the way, little update. It's been a few days since... All that happened. She's okay. Oh, and I forgot I got this fern on clearance, too, when I got those other plants on clearance. I mean, you can see why that one was on clearance. I forgot to mention that with the others. You know, I had to stick it in the shade. I know. I'm sidetracked. It's just a fern. Not a big deal. Yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I appreciate it. It makes a big difference for the video and for the channel, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. This is the area those needle palms are going to go in, so I'm going to be digging up everything. And, I mean, not everything, but the majority of things and moving them. I'm going to scoot these kalakajas elsewhere. I'm digging out a big azalea. I'm going to open the area up, and those are going to go around the base of a magnolia. And then I'm going to start to get some shrubbery in here. Cannot wait to do that. By the way, I'm obsessed with this alakaja. It looks like a ruffles to me, but I don't really know for sure. And the nurseries around here oftentimes just sell all their alakajas as just like assorted, which is really annoying. Because with the YouTube thing, I really don't like to be like, this is what this is, if I don't actually have a label. And its foliage is a little bit light for a ruffles, I suppose, but it's also not a like bright, bright sun. So I'm not sure. I've never seen a ruffles when it got big. Every time I've ordered a ruffles, I've gotten, it's come in very, very small and then rotted before it could get big. I don't know what that's about. It's the only alakaja I've had issues like that with. But um, I've only tried it two times. It's from the same vendor, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. But throw out any ideas you have on that one down to the comments. I love hearing from everybody. And you can hit me up on my social media, too. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. I have my, all that stuff linked down in the description below. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. <laughs> And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. <laughs>